It works. Look at it go. Okay, so what you're seeing is the um, <clears throat> kind of the by this, this it's a call simulator. It's a, basically a load simulator um, for the panel switch because I really wanted to make it look like calls were going through so it wasn't just sitting there static all the time. So uh, I wrote this with, with some help because um, I'm not a terribly good programmer. Um, it's not my thing. But but look, it's it's doing. Wait, another call's about to happen. Here it comes, I think. There we go. Woo! Well, it's going! Look, it's going! <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It's so much more alive. Uh, it's, uh, so right now I have it calling the, the panel, and the, the higher one there the, is the number five crossbar. It's also calling that right now. Um, I'm just experimenting with different things, because, oh, that didn't work. Uh, yeah, so super excited about this. Um, does still get stuck every once in a while. In fact, it looks like it might be stuck now. Um, and that's mostly because of bugs with the panel switch, not with the program, as far as I can tell. So, yeah, one line is stuck. I'm going to reset it because um, asterisk is giving me cranky pants errors. The nice thing is and I can't believe this is true. Is that somehow asterisk is pretty like the or my program slash asterisk is pretty tolerant of errors. If if this if this chokes, um, it'll just keep trying, and then it'll eventually just it won't be able to anymore, and you just control C it to exit, and then it will gracefully hang everything up in a minute. So I'm going to run it again and see what happens. Okay, so it started over. We have the district frame here and the incoming frame here. Okay. Over here is the ADIT channel bank. You can get these off eBay. So what this is doing is it's taking in T1 connection from asterisk, and it's spitting out 25 lines on that fat 25 pair cable you see there. This it's digital T1 into the ADIT channel bank, and then analog 25 uh, pair out. Now the two white cards you see are actually the um, the FXS or sorry the FXO cards for the phones. The black cards are not being used at the moment. Then the 25 pair goes here to the IDF, terminates there, and then from the IDF it goes to the line finder uh, for the subscriber lines. The eight it's going to mount to the wall pretty soon, as soon as I, uh, Eric has a minute to put it up. Eric made this nice little wood mounting plate for it, so it's going to mount on the wall right over there. The actual asterisk box lives over in the number one crossbar, because um, that's where it's always lived. That's it. Just a computer that sits there. This is also the PBX for our CNET connection, so other collectors can dial into the museum as well. The, uh, one of the interesting challenges here is that, um, well, because, you know, it's, it's one thing to design this on paper, right? 
and say, okay, I want calls to come in at this frequency and I'd like them to be processed this way and how do I do the timing and everything. But when you actually attach this to uh, a switch, you know, especially a hundred year old switch that's driven by motors and, 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 and gearboxes, the way you think it behaves on paper is not the way it actually it actually works. For instance, one of the things I had to do is in, in my timers, I had to set up uh, a delay to accommodate, you know, around 12 seconds for dialing. Um, and that was, that was done because I set a timer to wait. When that timer expires, we start a call. Once we start the call, we set a new timer for how long is the call duration going to be. But and then I pass that value to asterisk, so once it gets to the connected state, it'll wait for that period of time. But my program isn't paying attention to what state asterisk is in as far as am I dialing or am I waiting. So I had to kind of manually say, well, dialing takes about 12 seconds, and my program doesn't know what asterisk is doing, but since dialing takes about 12 seconds, my program will just give 12 seconds to asterisk so my program timer and asterisk's timer can mostly be in sync. Um, you would think there should be an easy uh, API or something for to get information in and out of asterisk, and there is, but it's kind of not very good, um, and it's not something that uh, that I'm really interested in spending the next month dealing with. So I just did stupid route and set up the timers based on how long does something like dialing take. Right now I have it running at a max of five concurrent calls. As you can see, it doesn't mean there's always five concurrent calls, it just means that's the theoretical maximum that you could have if all the timers lined up that way. Um, the real max we can have, it could be more than that, um, but right now five is a safe bet. Um, anyway, I'm I'm really, 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 really super proud of this, um, both the software and the, the hardware part. I learned a lot by doing it. Um, some stuff I kind of already knew, uh, like, you know, okay, here's an 8 it channel bank, and I have one of those at home, so it's fine, but um, some of the stuff I, I didn't know, like Python, um, and I kind of had to learn Python. Uh, to do this. There it goes. It's like four calls at once, and here comes a fifth right now. Okay, I gotta go home because I have a. I have to go to the pharmacy before it closes, and it closes in like 45 minutes. So.